My guest today is Chris Nicholas. Chris, how are you? I'm fantastic, David. Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. Tell me, Chris, what do you do? Uh, I am. I lead the Cloud Solutions Group at Trace3. Uh, so we are a consulting firm uh, primarily focused on the Fortune 1000. Um, we provide advisory architecture and engineering. Uh, so uh, my direct realm is, uh, is, is all things Cloud Solutions. All right. And I, the reason I asked you to be on my show is because you gave a presentation on the Microsoft campus uh, about a month ago. Uh, I was really impressive because I think um, I've been thinking a lot about artificial intelligence and the tools that Microsoft has. And so have you, but you were thinking it from a different perspective. You were thinking about from the people that are trying to decide if and how to implement AI AI solutions in the enterprise. Is that, is that a fair description of what we were trying to convey? Yeah, it was a talk uh, around concepts for enterprise acceleration of AI, right? So we, we have this very, very natural uh, push-pull uh, effect that's happening in the in the ecosystem and the market today, where enterprises recognize they, they have to do something with AI. They don't all necessarily know what, what that is. Uh, so, we, you right. know, at Trace Read, we kind of centered ourselves and built our portfolio around being able to provide advice on that. Um, across the ecosystem, right? So, you know, there's the the arena of AI assistance. There's the idea of, um, of systematizing ent enterprise knowledge um, and coupling the power of enterprise data with the, the beauty of uh, a closed pre-trained model. Those two things together, you know, can achieve some wonderful things. So, you know, the question is, what should each enterprise be doing? You know, the answer is probably highly bespoke to them. Um, and so, yeah, so we've, we've kind of really centered Trace3 all up, not just our cloud solutions group, but our, our other businesses as well. So data analytics, our security business, our management consulting business, we've, we've all come together to really think through how do we solve these problems for our enterprise portfolio. All right. Well, let's start with some, some use cases. What are some things that enterprise could consider doing with AI? I, I, I think a lot of people are just they get cap captivated by the buzzword. You know, they think, oh, AI, it's not a thing. We've got to get on this AI train. And that's that's not enough. No. Uh, so we are in many engagements with our enterprises uh, that we serve today. But I, I prefer to share with you the story of Trace3. Um, you know, I think that's, uh, I, I can expose a lot of, of what we're up to and, uh, and do it quite safely. So I, I will share that Trace3 is a knowledge organization so okay. our value is is actually you know steeped in and contained within our knowledge of our clients, um, and so we have fourteen hundred professionals approximately. They work approximately 40, 48 weeks a year, approximately forty hours a week. That's around two and a half million hours of professional time a year. We've been in business for two decades plus. So when you when you compound that knowledge. And the artifacts we create, the deliverables, the the uh, the presentations, our thoughts, our blogs, our content, our our patents, our our intellectual property. When you when you put all of that together, it's quite remarkable. Um, and if you and if you think about it from the perspective of you know how do we hire the next person, the next wonderful architect, or the next wonderful consultant, and expect them to come into Trace Three and understand who we are and be able to query our system of knowledge, it takes months, right? So. Our, um, again, our knowledge is, is our, our experience, our history, our, our, our volume and catalog of advice. So um, the idea of taking a trace free ontology, a domain of knowledge, like a set of clients. So say all of our, all of the success that we've had in healthcare and to be able to couple all that data together and place it in front of a model and to be able to interact with it um, means we can ask questions like, hey, please summarize the last six healthcare strategy engagements that we performed. What were, what were the outcomes? You know, what were the roadblocks? Uh, how did we fare? What were the financials of the, uh, of the engagements, for example? Like you can query that data, we have it all, right? So imagine the power of being able to do that as, a, as say a new, a new consultant to Tracer or a new architect. We, we've just- sure. started... or, or even an, uh, an experience consultant. That's... Or, yeah, or, or even an experience consultant. There's a lot, of, a lot of projects not, that you're not- to walk into the next meeting, yeah, exactly. So tremendous power, um, you know, direct impact to our productivity, direct impact to our ability to provide better advice, 
based on our history and experience and, and lesson, lessons learned, it removes kind of the shoot from the hip uh, approach that many, many consultants around the world take, not just to Trace 3, uh, but everywhere, you know? So we can go into meetings better prepared, we have better context, we have better advice, you know? So all of these things, direct impact to our, to our, uh, our overall value as an organization. Um, and so that's just one example of how we think about, you know, systematizing data. It's uh, it's all around putting your arms around domains of knowledge, coupling that power and uh, the power that's contained within that knowledge, um, and, and you know, using that with a one of these models today. Uh, that's a good example. Yeah. What about some of? Can you talk a little about some of the issues and the obstacles that uh, when people are trying to adapt an AI solution in the, in the enterprise? Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you when you think about the future, you know we're walking into a place where we've got the assistants. So Microsoft Copilot is a great example of this. So these are unique to each individual, their individual experiences, but they are AI assistants. So that's never going away. Um, we're we're in that world now. There's also the idea of being able to take somebody's fantastic personal experience with AI and re, you know creating a repeatable artifact. Or a, re a repeatable system, so uh, let's call that let's call that Copilot Studio or similar. So the idea of wrapping those individual experiences, making them repeatable, and uh, putting them on a marketplace internally, let's call that Studio. Let's call what we talked about earlier with Trace Three, taking a, a huge data set and putting it in front of a model. Let's call that RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. Um, there's also you know chatbot frameworks and and other types of AI that are, that are going to emerge. There are full blown Agents like what we've seen from Devin, the the latest software engineer that's that's uh, essentially hireable as an as an AI agent. That's gonna that's gonna pro proliferate and be uh, quite pervasive everywhere. So we're in this world where you have to be able to adopt multiple types of AI, and so hmm. because of that, uh, organizational AI governance is is critical, right? So that's that's missing for most of or the organizations that we talk to, and and if it's not missing, uh, organizations are working through to mature their idea of governance and in particular AI governance. So that's one big area where Trace3 has been providing advice. Okay, uh, can you yeah. define governance? What, what do you mean by that? Go governance, I mean, uh, you know, implementing and publishing uh, your stance uh, on AI philosophy, your, your risk tolerance, being able to publish which control frameworks you are pursuing and are, go are going to be you know, beholden to, how you interpret those control frameworks and translate them into controls that you're gonna be implementing. Uh, the idea of of, of, uh, of thinking through and implementing guardrails. So by definition, a guardrail is something that you shouldn't be hitting all the time. Imagine driving down a mountain road. You, you don't want to be touching the guardrail. You want to be informed by it. Uh, so that's the same idea with, uh, with uh, organizational governance around AI. The idea of federation. So you want to be pulling people in uh, from different parts of your business, um, financial leaders, people leaders, business leaders, uh, IT, right? So a federated group to to create a governance committee, um, and so that it's not you know, so governance isn't just a, an aspect of IT, for example. So all, all those things make up a a governance program, and it and helps the, an or, any organization move from principles to practice, like prioritizing use cases, deciding on a system of AI tech adoption, the velocity with which you want to do it. So all of these things make up a a, uh, a governance program. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what are some of the other issues that we have? Uh, another, obstacle, uh, AI? Uh, another obstacle is use case misappropriation. That's a big one. Um, we had one client Ooh, session where we big we words talked, for sure. <laughs> yeah, misappropriation. So, so I'll give I'll give you a, an example of a client, and then I'll tell you a story. Uh, so, okay. spent four hours on a think tank session, an ideation session with a, with a customer. What emerged were north of three. Hundred use cases for uh, for AI. We were talking specifically wow. about AI, AI assistance, right? So of those three hundred plus use cases, over half of them were actually found not to be worthy of being solved by as like copilot assistance or AI assistance. Uh, so just to give you just to give you a take on you know once you get rolling once you once you, once you start thinking about workflows and job functions and impact to business. The ideas are plenty; uh, they are wonderful, but they are not all applied to the same type of AI. And so, Trace Three, given its experience and our ability to kind of go deep with many organizations, instead of just one, um, we I think we bring tremendous value to the table to say, "Hey, look, that's a fantastic idea. This is how we solve it." 
Um, and so the story I'll tell you is a, is a, is a, a pretty cool one. It's about, it's about recruiting. Um, I think I shared this in Redmond, but I'll share it with you and your audience again. Um, but take, take recruiting, for example. So you are, uh, say, a person called Tom. Tom is a recruiter. Tom posts a job ad. Tom gets 300 responses, uh, hit his email to that job ad. They contain cover letters, resumes. The bodies of emails contain context about the, about the applicant. What does Tom have to do? Tom has to read all 300, all resumes, all cover letters to do a job that's complete and thorough. Select, you know, maybe 10, interview three, uh, make a hire. So Tom's not going to do that in most, in most organizations. Tom is going to look at the first 20, 30, pick out three people that look promising, interview those, make a hire, right? So, um, so in terms of now, if we, if we use an AI assistant like Copilot, that all of that information, all those resumes, all those cover letters have hit exchange online. So uh, imagine being able to query Copilot to say, hey, I, I posted a job ad, you know, an advanced prompt that says, I posted this job ad, I'm looking for these five attributes, please help me select, you know, kind of five, five of the top candidates that meet these criteria. Mm -hmm. Copilot does a great job of that. We've, we've seen it in, in early testing. And what that's done for the business is now, it's improved Tom's life as a recruiter. It's provided a 90, 90 north of 90% efficiency on, on Tom's time. We've, you know, in, in, in advised our client and Tom to put human in the loop process in place to remove ethical bias. So, so you know, human spot checking. But what, what we resulted in is a max, a, a massive efficiency on Tom's time, but also a more thorough view on everyone that's actually applied for that position versus right. the very human easy way out um, kind of thesis of just looking at looking through the resume stack until you find a couple that match, right? So it, sure. in essence, we in essence, the theory is that we provided the organization a much better candidate at the end right. of the day. You didn't um, just find the higher. first one that was good enough. You've, uh, you've uh, scoured through a lot more of them. <laughs> with some So I said, I said all that to say this, that's, that's Copilot. That's a great use case for Copilot. Now, if right. you think Tom has developed a fantastic use case for Copilot, you can create that and make it repeatable in Copilot Studio. Uh, so that becomes a published, you know, system that other recruiters in the organization can use. So that's a, that's a studio, like that's a, a custom GPT, if you like, or a custom, a custom Copilot. Now imagine through that ideation, the organization has seen the power of the data in their resume stacks, maybe going back five years. They, they think through things like, hey, maybe, maybe some people have expressed interest in our organization that we weren't ready for at the time. Right. Um, maybe, maybe we are now. Maybe, maybe we can to fill a, a, you know, a need for, say, a cold fusion expert next week that just has come up. Maybe we can query everyone that's, that's, uh, that's applied over the last five years. Now that's retrieval augmented generation, that's, that's when you would vector database, for example, that entire history of applicants um, in front of a, a model and be able to query that. So, so one, so we talked about one story, improving recruiting, and we, we've talked about three different ways to, to make that happen using three different parts of the AI technology stack. So the, now imagine multiplying that by hundreds. That's what we're seeing in the field is we're seeing massive, not, not I wouldn't say confusion, I would say mystery around how to solve these stories and, and, and where to place them um, on like the AI value chain. Sure, yeah, or how to implement them. What's, uh, what are the tools that I need to use to make that yeah. thing true? You mentioned uh, Copilot Studio is a good tool for that, but yeah. our customers aren't born knowing that information. <laughs> that's, right. something they, that's something they have to learn. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, security. That has to be a big issue in AI as it is just about everywhere. And maybe it's magnified a little bit in this. Yeah. I mean, we're in the era of AI readiness. So uh, for decades now, we've, we've been trying to solve this, this problem of sensitive data management. How do we, you know, where is it? Who has access to it? Um, how long should we keep it? Like all these kinds of things, right? So, and then when, when we detect it to be able to apply certain controls to it, like, you know, maybe restrict sharing capabilities or maybe uh, define um, kind of a, uh, a system of an inventory and a system of reference on like when we can pull that data back if it, if it becomes a, if that becomes a requirement. So um, sensitive data management is the kind of the, the be all end all of successful AI. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very important facet of, um, of building a foundation on which you can adopt AI. So, so yes, the so tracery has been very focused on helping organizations fast track and apply velocity to 
solving sensitive data management. Um, we've got some amazing partners in that space that, uh, that have developed brand new approaches. They, we've seen them working um, and, uh, and yeah, we've been, we've been helping to take that to market and to, to really kind of improve our clients' posture. Uh, and not just posture, but also data readiness. Our, our data analytics team does a does a wonderful job of helping to to, to curate data and and make it uh, make it sit in a format where AI can can really maximize its or extract its value and do things like sentiment analysis, uh, and so that we can ground models properly and the data that we want to care about. So those two things: data security, data data readiness. Uh, th those are really pivotal for to, to lay a foundation um, for successful AI. I think the data readiness you just brought up, it, it ties back into something you just kind of really quickly mentioned earlier, which was RAG, RAG. Mm -hmm. uh, can, you, can you go into a little bit more detail about what that is? Yeah, so retrieval augmented generation is when you take a, an enterprise data set uh, around anything, around a domain of knowledge. It could be you know, a set of deliverables, it could be uh, financial analysis, it could be any, any, any group of data that makes sense or, or is a set of knowledge. That when you when you store that and place it in front of a model, you can uh, ground the model's responses in that data before it before you get your output. So you you prompt the the kind of the, the model does its processing. Um, it routes the response through your data, essentially prioritizes your data and weighs it um, in a heavier way, which is, by the way is also tunable. Um, and then you get an output. So you're not only getting the, the kind of the general power and general intelligence found in many of these implementations or of, uh, of, of pre-trained models, but you are now kind of favoring and referencing your data as um, you know, in front of that model. So that's the general idea of RAG. Now it gets really, really kind of detailed and refined. Um, in, within RAG, there's a whole world within the kind of the vector database approach. And now what's emerging as a very interesting uh, kind of shift in the architecture is uh, is one around knowledge graph. Uh, so we're we're kind of really really exposing and uh, or uh, exploring both of those tracks. Okay, yeah, uh, good stuff. It's, uh, it is a complex topic. Um, yeah. What's uh, what have we not talked about that's really critical when we're dealing with AI readiness? I think uh, I think you know. The, the 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 steps in the maturity for an enterprise, I think, are, are really really important. Um, I've seen I've seen some enterprises get stuck on going after the big hairy audacious goals first, and okay. that that's um, you know you can applaud that, right? I mean, so big dreams are, are okay; they, they always have been. Uh, but I really think, especially with AI, uh, you really have to, as an enterprise, think through the idea of okay, we're going to prepare for assistance. We're going to prepare for like being able to provide a kind of a, like a GPT style marketplace to our internal consumers so that we can repeat success and not just talk about it. And we're also going to get prepared to, to explore kind of the, the more detailed rag concepts. Um, we, we, you can't just do one, you've got to do all three, but when you do all three, take an MVP approach, a minimum viable approach to both the security, do enough security to feel comfortable. The OWASP Foundation has a, has a great uh, OWASP top 10 around AI controls. That's a great place to start. If you don't want to you know, take all the kind of the time and effort that it takes to interpret like the, like the NIST AI RMF framework, for example. So find a place where, that makes you comfortable from a security perspective. And then also start with a small use case, but do it in all three of those areas. You know, look at assistance, adopt one look at a, a more general set of a uh, customized kind of co-pilot structure uh, and bring that to your to your to a pilot group uh, within your organization and then and then also start playing with systematizing your data uh, in front of a like a, with a rag architecture do all of those things because our prediction is going to be that you're going to have to be all of those things to to really kind of make the most of this AI revolution that we're in um, and that I we haven't even mentioned kind of the the thought through of uh, of agents and, and their play in our future as well, which is also pivotal. But oh, you know, what's what's an agent? Uh, an agent is a kind of a, a pre-canned uh, AI system that has been designed to do a thing, uh, much like what you would expect from a human. Um, so take th think about software development, for example. You might create uh, an an AI system that's really good at producing code after it receives instructions. Uh, so. This has recently made the news. Uh, Devin, if you want to look one up, 
uh, is a very exciting project. But they've done just this. They've, they've created a system which you can talk to, interface with, you know, much like you would a human, uh, and you can set to tasks like, hey, uh, go out and, uh, and, you know, and do these things uh, and come back to me, uh, and it, it'll do just that. Uh, and then, the, you know, in the future, when you extrapolate this out, uh, we could be looking at an entire ecosystem of, of, of agents working with each other uh, to produce a human outcome or, or a human desirable outcome. Hmm. Um, so yeah, that's the the world of agents that we're fast approaching. That sounds really cool. I've not played with Devin, but I'm, I'm googling it with Bing right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And what we described earlier, the um, uh, there are certain key things you need to have, but take an MVP approach. That just sounds like agile, agile methodologies. Let's 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 get iterate fast, fail fast, try things, get feedback, mm -hmm. and then improve them something we've hopefully been doing for the last 15 or 20 years, uh, just applied to AI. Yeah, I mean, it's it's this exciting. We're at a unique moment in time in technology. Like AI is, AI is, as a, is about to proliferate and change everything, um, if it hasn't already in your world, and it certainly has for me. Uh, but, you know, we're in a place where we want to accelerate, but we have to do it safely. And so we, what we don't want to do is spend a year or two thinking through controls before we touch AI. Right. Those two things have to be in conjunction, right? So yes, mature over time, but yes, find an MVP position um, where you can where, where you can experiment safely today um, and do that quickly, right? So, so do those things in conjunction. And a pilot group is a great construct. It's typically made up of people you trust, people that have shown aptitude um, or early promise in AI. You can, you, you can, you can really use these, uh, these programs to, to champion those people, but also to, to leverage them and their support to, to get things off the ground. So, you know, MVP approaches to security, MVP approach to the to, to the people involved, um, and MVP approach to the use case. So let's not forget, let's tackle small things, let's make them successful, um, and let's build on that from there. Um, you know, I think those are those are really great ideas for um, an enterprise to follow. Excellent. Are you continuing to speak about this publicly? I, I, I will be. I can't escape it, I, nor do I want uh, to. Where, where are you going next? Where will we see you? <laughs> uh, I'm doing a few things internally for Trace3. So we have a, a Northern California event. Um, uh, we have a, a, an event in the Southwest um, and an, a, a, an event out East. Uh, so I'll be doing those things next. Okay. Hopefully you'll share it with the rest of the public. And in the meantime, we have this recording. And I really appreciate your time, Chris. Thank you so much. You bet. It's been a pleasure. Always. Today, it's one of the most incredible times I can remember to, to be a technologist. The era of AI has really kind of reinvigorated me uh, and my team personally, um, and as a group to, 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 ex to experiment, to explore, to evolve ourselves. Um, but one thing I'll say about technology is that it's not just about the tech, it's also about who you get to do it with. So inadvertently at Trace3, we've built a community, we've built friendships, uh, and the fact that we get to play with technology and do it with, with people we love, um, the, the power of those two things uh, makes me wake up every day. I'm, I'm happy to do it, and uh, I can't wait to, to see what we achieve together.